My Lords, may I join the chorus welcoming ministers to the new responsibilities. My Lords, may I also start by saying that I very much look forward to hearing the maiden speech of my noble friend, Lord Fuller. I know he will make a very great contribution to this House, given his experience in business as well as a leader in local government. My Lords, we continue to be in an era mired in low economic growth. With GDP growth in the United Kingdom forecast this year to remain stubbornly below the 2% mark per year. Yesterday, according to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, United Kingdom GDP forecasts for this year will be 0.7% and 1.5% next year in 2025. As a reminder, an economy needs to grow by at least 3% per year in order to double per capita incomes in one generation, which is approximately 25 years. And this is the way, the route, to improve living standards for the next generation. Amid these somber growth prospects, however, there is now the promise of two super cycles that could propel an era of stronger economic growth and drive opportunity here at home in Britain and globally. <laughs> These are generative artificial intelligence and the clean energy transition. My Lords, in the King's speech, His Majesty stated a commitment to a clean energy transition which will lower energy bills for consumers over time. However, it is now becoming increasingly clear that not only are these two paths, AI and the energy transition, closely interdependent, but also that AI is creating a surge in global energy demand that could meaningfully undermine the clean energy transition, pose a challenge to national energy security, particularly in a deglobalizing world, and in fact increase energy prices, creating inflationary pressure and raising the cost of living. The International Energy Agency forecasts that by 2026, just two years from now, Global energy use by AI data centers alone will consume 1,000 terawatt hours. For context, this is more than the total electricity and gas consumed in the United Kingdom in 2023. More specifically, the chief executive of Britain's national grid has cautioned this year that the grid is becoming constrained and that here in the UK, power use by AI data centers will increase sixfold in the next decade. Even before AI's possible impact on the global economy became apparent, global demand for energy was unmet. This demand supply imbalance in energy has been explained by the world population growth, urbanization, and increases in wealth as developing countries have converged to higher living standards over several, de several decades. The shortfall in energy supply globally means that still today, roughly 1.5 billion people around the world have no access to clean, cost-effective, and reliable energy. The dramatic increase in energy demand arising from new transformative technologies such as artificial intelligence, cryptocurrencies, and quantum computing has real-world implications for the economy, the financial markets, and for public policy. In terms of the economy, the AI energy transition dynamics could lead to greater social inequality. AI hyperscalers these are large technology companies that have significant computing infrastructure and resources to support artificial intelligence, have much more flexibility to move their data and storage centers to locations where they can tap potentially cheaper, cleaner energies, such as Gen 4 nuclear plants. The question is whether such a trend could leave households relying ever more on conventional forms of energy, which can be more expensive to transmit and distribute. If so, 
This would entrench energy poverty for households and widen energy inequality, at least between technology businesses and household consumers. Another route to higher prices is that extra demand for energy puts inflationary pressures on renewables, forcing up the full complex of energy prices and thereby harming living standards. In terms of financial markets, without a meaningful increase in global energy supply, the rising energy demand from AI could add enormous volatility to energy prices. These dynamics are not yet fully priced in either the energy or capital markets. I point here to the register of interest that I serve on the board of the directors of a global energy company. And in terms of public policy, how then does Britain and the wider world face this additional threat of the prospect of energy instability? The pressure of additional energy demand from AI means governments must update their understanding of global energy supply demand dynamics, ensure that energy security is retained in a world of conflicts and geopolitical fissures, and remain steadfast in the clean energy transition. We have heard in the King's speech of the proposal of a new national champion, Great British, British Energy, a publicly owned clean power company which will help the country achieve energy independence and unlock investment in energy infrastructure. The global energy demand supply dynamics are leading many to think of energy primarily as a public utility rather than as a commercial enterprise. There is a movement towards the creation of national champions and even discussion in some quarters dare I say, of outright nationalization of energy assets. My lords will no doubt already be aware that 60% of world energy today is supplied by state-owned enterprises. My lords, such an approach can jar with the market-based system of energy production in many developed and Western countries. However, clearly the expense, size, scale, and complexity of the clean energy transition means that some state involvement is warranted, at least through thoughtful regulation, subsidies, and tax reform. However, my lords, we must not sleepwalk into a situation where clean energy transition is delayed and even impeded because of uncalibrated new demand shocks. As we legislate, we should be minded that an all-important factor in determining successful energy transition will be innovation. It is crucial, therefore, that any system and intervention protects, encourages, and harnesses the innovation abilities within the private sector. Only with the vibrant private sector working in partnership with the public sector can we hope to deliver reliable, cost-effective, and scalable energy at pace. Yeah, yeah.